Hi everyone. So um, basically, um, carrying on our discussion about rotational motion, and uh, let's uh, talk about um, you know different aspects of rotational motion in terms of torques and you know angular acceleration and all that in terms of um, the problems that we can see um, that they're dealing with that uh, with the rotational motion. So one of the very typical questions or problems are uh, are as follows. So it says, for example, if it takes five seconds for a DVD player to stop a DVD with a rotational speed of with a rotational speed of um, seventy five hundred RPM revolutions per minute, um, and so this is initial rotational speed, and it's gonna be stopped. So finally, it's gonna be zero. What is the average rotational acceleration? So we are essentially solving for alpha rotational acceleration, knowing that alpha is changing angular velocity over time. That gives me final minus initial over the time. And then that gives, uh, that gives us essentially minus 7,500 over five, five seconds. So this is revolutions per minute per second. Okay. This is uh, this is how uh, how these sort of uh, equations uh, the, these sort of um, problems are done. Um, so it's really typical. It's just the same as a translational or linear um, motion, but now it, in terms of rotational, it's uh, it's not um, too much different from what we you, uh, we were um, dealing with in uh, rotational um, motion. <clears throat> Another problem is essentially uh, dealing with torque. So we know torque is R times F. That's the definition for torque. And uh, so let's just do this one. Suppose a wrench has a handle that's uh, about one meter long. If we exert a force of 200 newton at the uh, at one end of the um, handle what would be the torque uh, that's exerted on the knot when we are screwing the knot so we are solving for the torque knowing that the wrench is about one meter long so this is your lever arm, and then you're exerting your force here, and you were uh, you're trying to um, basically loose the um, uh, the the bolt. Hence, torque is lever arm times the force, and one times two hundred. That gives me two hundred meters newtons. Okay, so this is uh, this is a torque problem. Now let's move on um, and talk about tor uh, problems that are dealing with uh, different torques uh, on the same uh, on the same problem, and you know, talking about stability, essentially. So um, going on with that, uh, let's just do this one. Two kids with masses of 40 and 50 kilograms. So there are two kids on, on a seesaw with mass of 40 and 50 kilogram. If one of the kids, the lighter, is sitting about three meters away from the pivot point, where uh, where should the other kid, the heavier kid, sit in order for the seesaw to be balanced? Okay, how many meters? So let's first draw the picture, and this is the pivot point, okay? And this is the lighter kid, and it's like about three meters away, so here is the... 40 kilogram kid and then um, you know there is another kid <clears throat> that's uh, about 50 kilogram now and uh, we are wondering um, where this kid is going to be sitting in order for the whole seesaw to be balanced and no net torque is going to be exerted on it that's what we mean by seesaw being balanced right and it's not going to drop uh, it's not going to fall um, um 
either to the right or to the left or anything like that. Okay, so uh, in these questions, first and foremost, you need to measure the torque that's on the left. You need to measure the force on the right and see how you can equate them and how they are going to be the same and so, such that they cancel each other out. So uh, these are the masses, but for force, uh, but for torque, we need the force of mg. So we are given the m's, but we need mg because torque is lever arm times the force. Our force now is mg, right? So left torque, this part, this part of the pivot point is R, which is 3 meters, times 40 times 10, and that gives, uh, gives, gives us 1,200 meters newtons of torque. Now, on the right-hand side, what we have is essentially the distance that we are solving for. We don't know what that distance is, X or R, whichever you want to call okay some distance that you're solving for times 50 times 10 and that gives you 500 r and meters newtons now in order for the whole system to be balanced torque for the left has to be equal to torque for your light uh, from from the right hand side and essentially this 500 R has to be equal to 1200 meters newtons. So we are equating left torque to the right torque and it's essentially 1200 equals 500 R and that gives us 12 over five and that gives us a uh, 1.4 or something, yeah. So this is these many meters, so whatever that is, 12 over 5, 2.4, uh, yes. Okay, 2.4 meters. Um, so the other kit, so 12, if you divide it by 5, you're going to get uh, 2.4 meters. So this kit has to be sitting at 2.4 meters away from the pivot point such that the, uh, the seesaw actually is balanced. So these are typical questions about, um, you know, torques and angular accelerations and all that sort of stuff. In the next video, I'm going to be talking more, uh, talking um, about uh, the rest of rotational motion. Bye-bye.